Welcome to the Jonathan Ross Show. Let's start, as we always do, by looking in the green room and seeing who we have on the show for you tonight. My first guest is the star of one of the nation's favourite TV shows, Doc Martin. It's Martin Coons, ladies and gentlemen. Hello. Looking fabulous this evening, looking fresh and beautiful. Next up, we have the queen of Strictly Come Dancing, one of the greatest ballet dancers ever to grace the stage. Oh it is Darcy Bustle. <laughs> my next guest is not just an award-winning rapper, he's also a songwriter, producer, fashion icon. It's Tiny Temper. <laughs> looking sweet, looking swift as always. Look at that. And we've also got a great actor who starred in some of the best British movies of recent times. You'll also have seen him on TV in The Fabulous Spaced and recently the critically acclaimed Mr Sloan. It is Nick Frost, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. That's a hip beard right there. He's got the beard going on. I love that beard. And we have more for you. We have music tonight with his own gospel choir. We have a fantastic performance from multi-platinum selling artiste, John Newman. Yeah. Welcome back, John. Like a Dal and Amy Winehouse roll together, John. <laughs> John Newman. OK, before we get to that, of course, the movie everyone's been talking about really this week is Star Wars The Force Awakens. <laughs> all right? They released a new trailer. It's all coming soon. We're going to go and see it just before Christmas. We happen to have one of the biggest Star Wars fans in the country here with us tonight. No. <laughs> Nick Foss, not Dal. Yeah, there you go. One of the biggest Star Wars fans in the country right there. <laughs> I, I'm going to ask you to do this now. Feel free to say no if you don't want to, but uh, you do a great Chewbacca. I know you do. <laughs> <laughs> the beard that, helps. That's Chewbacca when he caught himself in his flies after he got the yeah. toilet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, of course, but most of us don't go as far as Nick has done. I don't know if you remember this photograph. Check this out. <laughs> <laughs> so, Nick, what was happening there? That was on our Paul press tour, and that was at Area 51, and that was sprung on us at the last minute. And if, I don't know if you can see, but... It's probably the lowest I've ever been. <laughs> <laughs> like they made us dress up and we didn't want to do it. Uh, but did you see the trailer, though, Nick? Because that's what everyone was looking at. Yes, yes, okay. I did. I thought it was amazing. How many of you saw the trailer that they launched this week? <laughs> okay. But Star Wars fans were really excited to see the actual trailer, but not as excited, it seems, as some of the people who are actually in it. Uh, one of the rising British stars of cinema now, John Boyega is in the big movie, and they filmed him watching the trailer for the first time as well. And check this out, you see how excited he is. Yep, 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 What? 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 There you go, look at that. Wow. And let's get my first guest out. He's one of Britain's favourite screen actors for over 20 years. It's the very funny Mr Martin Clune. Martin, lovely to see you lovely again. To see you. So, big congratulations, I'm sure. I'm sure many of you. How many of you here are watching Doc Martin on Monday night? <laughs> it couldn't be a big, it could not be a bigger success, that show. It's hanging in there, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Would it be yeah. fair to say that that show, uh, not just the success it has with audiences, but the, the way where you film it and how you film it, that it's had a big impact, it's changed your life? My life, yes. It's paid for it. Uh... <laughs> Would I be right in thinking, and maybe I'm reading too much into this, you were in London, you were working in London, you had a London lifestyle, and you got up there and you seemed to sort your life out as well? Yes, kind of, yes. Yes, I suppose so. It all, uh, well, Emily was born when we were doing Saving Grace, and it was out of that, that a movie called Saving Grace that was shot down in Cornwall, and it was out of that that Doc Martin so, sort of started. So it was all... It was great timing for me, yeah, I guess. Yeah. I got over the London thing. And so now you're out there, you live very much a kind of a, a country life. You, you have... Uh, you you yeah. interact with animals and people, it seems to me, equally. <laughs> um, you enjoy... You have a farm, don't you? We do, yeah, we have a farm. And it's a working farm? It's a very working farm, yeah. We're, we're, um, we're carving at the moment. There's a few... We're, we're having one... We had a little... Um, yeah, so but actually... <laughs> it's one other farm we're in. <laughs> <laughs> we, we did actually have... It's a, we named the girls... We only named the girls because the boys generally um, go off. Um, <laughs> so like university or that's work? It, that's it, that's it. Yes. Yeah. You know, we give them a good start <laughs> and off you go. Um, and uh, you get, they've all got different uh, year, uh, initial letters according to what year it is, and it's a D year this year. And um, so we called our uh, most recent heifer calf Darcy. 
Wow. Uh, not knowing that... <laughs> there she is! Wow. Look. No, uh, no, that's Dave. <laughs> that's Dave, that's a bull calf. OK. And he's going to keep his knackers and we've named him. That's Darcy. Ah, oh, well, Darcy <laughs> is sweeter than Dave, it's got to be said. She's a poppet. So, uh, but you said Dave, so Dave, you're going you're gonna to let him keep his equipment... We are, because and... his dad's quite spiffy and um, his mother <laughs> is a, 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 no, a handsome bull. And um, his mother is our, our, our best mother. She gives birth the easiest, so that's good to breed from. So you now look at an animal and you think that's a, that's a good-looking animal. Well, I'm learning, you know. Yeah, yes, yeah. oh, yeah, yeah. So you've yeah. been in the country for a long time, yeah. haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> I've got a favourite cow. <laughs> <laughs> we might get back to the farm, because I okay. love the idea of farm life. But let's talk about filming Dot Martin, because this week, this coming Monday, Dot Martin, you have a very special guest star. Thanks to you. Yeah, well, tell us about this. Well, I came on here, and um, Sigourney Weaver was here, who I'd never met, bloody blow, very nice. And she said, oh, I've watched every episode of Dot Martin. And um, Philippa, my wife, was here afterwards, and uh, uh, Sigourney said, oh, can I be in it? Wow. So, well, okay. <laughs> All right. Well, we, we sort of wrote apart for an American tourist um, and kind of thought, well, let's, let's wait and see, you know, A, if she likes it, B, you know, whatever. But, it, 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 you know, everything fell into place and over she came with her husband, uh, Jim, and she was brilliant. She was really nice. Everyone with the crew was so excited. So excited. I well, fell off my chair twice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's an exciting thing. You know, she's the one who takes yeah. on aliens barehanded, and now she's there in Dark I Martin. know, yeah. Were I you know. tempted to put her in a big zoot, 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 and <laughs> fight a cow or something? Was that. Do you know? <laughs> <laughs> one of our crew, I won't name him, but he was in a uh, gym nearby uh, on equipment with his teenage son who was staying with him. And uh, lo and behold, Sarooni was in that gym with her husband, whose name's Jim. Um, and they were all like that. <laughs> And uh, my friend's son looked at Sigourney's husband without realising he was a moon. Let's have a look at a clip. This is on Monday night's Doc Martin, and you will see Sigourney Weaver in Sleepy Dorset. Have a look, it's ITV, 9 pm Monday night. Well, if you won't help me, maybe your husband will. I need some Timolol. I'm not her husband. We have a connection. No, we don't. Do you have glaucoma? Yes, and all I need are some drops. No, you need a prescription. Fine. How do I get a prescription? You have to see the doctor. And where's the doctor? I'm the doctor. And you live with a pharmacist? What? No, I don't live with her. I was seeing her husband. Whatever you say. I make sure he keeps up with the light daily exercise and keep an eye on his medication. Um, can you just examine me here so I can get some drops, please? No, make an appointment. Thank you, Doctor. Will there be anything else, Beth? I guess not. America. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Fabulous. Gets a big laugh. That's what we like. There you go. You know what? Uh... I'm curious, because she's coming over here and she's appearing in one of our big lectures. I know, I mean, you are uh, clearly a super successful, super talented actor and very valued in this country. Did you ever try and make it in the States? Did you ever want to have a career in movies or TV over there? Uh, ages ago, when Philip and I first met and I directed a film, we went out there and tried to get directing work, but I'd never sought it as an actor, weirdly. I don't know why. I think the idea of sort of starting in or prospecting or you kind of think, oh, well, you know, I'm only over here if they want me, but I don't, I don't want to go and live there. And now you have the family life here. Yeah. You know what's so sweet is, you know, clearly, uh, the two of you, what a, what a strong and what a kind of close couple you must be, because I know you normally travel together, but, uh, and she isn't here uh, tonight, so you'll be out with some, I don't know, cows or something, Stephen? <laughs> but she, uh, <laughs> see what I can get. <laughs> <laughs> um, Do you know any cows? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty ones, mine. <laughs> So, um, anyway, tell me about the documentary that you made. Uh, you travel in the world and you were looking at the interaction between man and beast. Oh, yeah, people who beast. had sort of working day-to-day -day relationships yeah. with animals. And this was about a year ago. On. What was it called? Yeah. It was called... Uh, it's called Man and Beast. Man yes, and Beast, there you yes, go. Yes, yes. OK, how did you get on? Well, what, what was the strangest animal? Which were the friendliest? Which were the least friendliest beasts you um, met? The elephant was the sort of saddest and the most beautiful and the nicest and all of that. Um, they were all fascinating. The monkey... There was a monkey in Thailand that didn't... Uh, just didn't like me. <laughs> he just didn't like me. He went for me. Why, we, why, why did he not like well, you? I don't know. Well, I do know. Well, I, we had to test this guy. He, he went around on a sidecar on a moped and his driver had to go and get petrol. Hold we it, were... the monkey had his own driver. Well, the, no, his <laughs> owner, who would say... He, was, he picked coconuts for a living, this monkey, and the guy would send him up the trees and he'd throw the coconuts down. 
And uh, they went to work on the moped and with the monkey in the sidecar. And we'd fitted a little camera on the sidecar to get, you know, footage of us all going along. And so we went to get petrol and they thought, well, we'll test the camera, blah, whatever. And the minute the fella got off the uh, moped <laughs> to go and pay for the petrol, the monkey went, wow, went for me like that. And I leapt off. And, um... Did he think you after his coconuts? Well... <laughs> <laughs> Well, I started plying him with these fruit because I thought, look, we're going to be on telly together, mate. Let's, you know, I've done this with actors in the past and it works. Um, <laughs> you know, give him some fruit and everything. And then we started to get on with the fruit. So I thought, oh, I got my phone out. I'll get a little video of him. Well, we have, to show footage. The we have footage to show you interacting with this monkey, I believe. So have a look at this. So the first clip is when you first oh, approached this yes. little. What was the monkey's name? Any, can you remember that? No, he didn't have a name. Let's call him Darcy. Dar <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's, here's Martin approaching this little uh, monkey who's not in the best of moods for the first time. That was, yeah. That's when you first got to know him. Now we have you going back trying to bribe him mm. with fruit. Yes, and get a picture of the film I can show the and family. You, and you thought that he would go for this? Well, he'd had a few off me. We were getting okay. on quite well, I thought, yes. Okay, so let's have a look. Here we are. Let's have a look at him reacting now. Hey, monkey. It's about doing a bribe for the plantation there. Ow! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. You know, you've got a yeah. yeah. When I said to the fellow, I said, why, why does he keep attacking me? I said, feeling all knowledgeable and zoological. I said, is it a fear response? It often is with animals' violence. And he said, no, he wants to fight you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so, um, well, let's go back to the farm a little bit, if we might. OK. okay no monkeys on your farm. No monkeys. OK, uh, but you love a horse, don't you? We've got lots of 14 horses, You consider yeah. yourself a uh, horse person now? I'm a horse person. I'm not a great rider. That's... That's Ronnie. That's one of my Clydesdales. That's a gigantic yeah. horse. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and you also, there's one of you riding, you have uh, some even bigger horses, it seems to me, that pull you in a cart. That's the same boys, that's them. Wow. That's, uh, yeah, that's Ron nearest us and Bruce behind. Okay. Yeah. And that's you sitting there with your dog? That's with Tina Audrey, yes. Okay. Uh, and so uh, you work the horses on the farm or you use them yeah. just to ride for pleasure? Well, since I've started riding them, I'm really enjoying riding them, so I haven't put them in the cart much. But, okay. yeah, yeah, they can pull a harrow and stuff. Do you have any uh, small horses on the farm? Yeah, we've got five miniature Shetlands. And you like those animals? Yeah, they're fine, OK, yeah. I like the small horses. Now, I'd only ever seen you with big horses, but we thought this might be nice for you and hopefully for you as well, because we were contacting... We, some people said they've got a teeny, tiny horse. Would you like to see him? Oh, I'd love to. And so I said, OK, we'll bring the horse in. So I'm going to bring that horse now for you. Uh, you'll enjoy this. We have Barbie, who's going to be brought out for us now, I believe. Oh, now, Barbie is a miniature American horse, so oh, you can be... Uh, oh, oh sweetheart! Here, would you like a carrot to give Barbie? <laughs> Martin, you can hold on to Barbie, because Barbie's pretty tiny, isn't she, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah. So, Martin, you take Barbie a bit over there. Oh, okay. OK, because I've got a treat for you, because we now have coming on... Martin, get Barbie out of the way. Get, get oh. <laughs> OK, because we've got Look what we consider to be the tiniest horse in the United Kingdom. Coming on stage now. This is Dave, so if Dave would like to come up... <laughs> Dave. Hey, Dave, Dave, look, well, check this out. Check that out. What's that going on there? Oh! He's got my finger. Look at little Dave, ladies and gentlemen. Dave is the smallest horse. He's going to oh bite something. God. Don't go there. <laughs> oh, I dropped it because I'm nervous of a horse's teeth. <laughs> it's not teeth. You're a natural. Look at that. You've got them eating out of your hand. <laughs> Dave's tiny. Dave, you can't ride, Dave. Oh. Okay. Dave. Look at you Isn't he a little... Hello, would you like one? Barbie... Ah, uh, Barbie <laughs> is... Uh, Barbie is Dave's mum. Isn't that sweet? Dave. Have you ever seen a smaller horse, Martin? No. OK. Um, no. <laughs> He's nice, isn't he? He's nice. Where's really another cat? Nice. Let me get another cat from him. Hold it. Oh, Wait blimey. Down. They're going to get terrible habits with these carrots, aren't Why they? Why are they going to get habits with a carrot? Because then they'll mug people. They'll try and bite their hands. <laughs> the carrots. <laughs> Look at this. Do you want a glass of oh, water, he, Barbie? Oh, he's... You're a bit... You're a bit useless He's again. quite nippy, isn't he? What are you doing over there? <laughs> like, Hold on. Hold on. One for both of you. Have another one. Don't mind that. Have one there. There you go. One for you. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of hard to get back into an interview after this. Will oh, you, no. Why don't you sit down with the horses? OK, come you on, babies. You, you go over there. 
over there. <laughs> Do you think we can get a sit on the couch? Oh, look, the carrot man. Oh, I was talking about oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Thank you for coming in. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you agree he was a lovely guest and he now goes home with two lovely horses. <laughs> <laughs> no one goes home empty handed on this show. <laughs> Martin Poons, ladies and gentlemen, Barbie Ooh. and Days. Still to come, we've got Tidy Temper, Darcy Bustle, and John Newman. And after the break, I'll be chatting to Nick Foss, so don't go anywhere. There you go. <laughs> Jonathan Ross Show, Martin Coons is still here. Now, you'll know my next guest is one of our finest comedy actors. He starred in Shaun of the Dead, Hot Files, The World's End, which was a fabulous movie. It is the one and only Mr Nick Frost, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Have a big hug. He loves a big hug. You love a big hug. He's so you're so broad. What is it about a big hug that you oh. enjoy, Nick Frost? It's just disarming, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Also, I like to feel for knives or pistols <laughs> when I'm around the back. Yeah. Oh, that's what you were doing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were after my holiday <laughs> money. <laughs> is that what? It, <laughs> sorry, I'll touch you. <laughs> My holiday money. <laughs> uh, OK, Nick has a book out, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm very pleased to be able to say I can recommend it wholeheartedly. No showbiz nonsense here, because it is uh, not just very funny, but also very moving as well. It's called Truths, Half-Truths and Little White Lies. A very honest, very disarming uh, memoir. I'm always curious, though, when people do this, why did you do it and why now? Well, I mean, I... I... I, I had, like, four months off last year, and I, I like working, so I thought, I'm going to just start writing something. And this is kind of what came out. And I think my motive was I don't... I, I mean, I don't have any... If you read the book, you'll realise I don't have any parents anymore. So, you know, there are lots of things that I kind of will never know about them. Just stuff about them growing yeah, up and that I mean, kind of thing. Uh, you know, I have a thing that we, we, we... I don't think we ever ask our parents enough. We never yeah. realise that they're, they're human beings, you know, until it's kind of too late and you think, I don't know what song they like to dance to. I don't know the restaurant they went and ate in or, you know, yeah. what they did on their... You know what I mean? There's Little so much details that we don't... Yeah, exactly. made their life what it was. Yeah, yeah. so, I mean, I just... I have a four-year-old uh, little boy and I just wanted to make sure that he... There, there were... And if there were any gaps, you know, that he didn't know, then he could read this and think, ah, oh, he was an... That was a real idiot. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? He had a good heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your life is very... Uh, you know, you, you've been through a lot and also you came from... Not a dissimilar background to me, you know, you were born in East London. Yep. Uh, and you were a very, very normal family, no one in show business. No. So I'm guessing, did you ever think, did you have ambitions to be <laughs> doing what you do now, to be where you are now? Uh, oh no, God. I'm the one in the middle, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. I never wanted to act, and it was only after I met Simon Pegg that, you know, he literally threatened me and said that I, 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 I had to come and do space, so... I had nothing else going on, and I never uh, imagined... I never had a plan. I've never, I haven't got a plan, so it was like, well, eh, all right, I'll do it, you know. And it, I was all right at it. Were you, were you secretly thrilled, though, there was someone saying, look, you have this potential, you could do this? Was it something where you, you wanted to do it but couldn't admit it to yourself or couldn't say it out loud? <clears throat> I think I was really embarrassed yeah. about acting, you know. It wasn't something that I was proud of at first, and I was quite... Well, I've seen your work. Uh... <laughs> 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 I was afraid of it, you know what I mean? I was, like, nervous yeah, to, yeah. Say, to, to say lines in front of people. Well, now you look back, it must seem bizarre to be in the position you are now. You know, you're out, you're making movies for a Sitting living. Sitting next yeah. to Martin Clunes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. With his know, holiday money round the could, back. <laughs> <laughs> it uh, couldn't be more of a change, could it, really? No, not at all. It's, um... I just... I, f I feel very... I th feel thrilled, you know. I, I, I fell into a job, thanks to my mate Simon, that I happened to love and that I was kind of pretty good at. And I think if I have one skill, it's that I can kind of recognise opportunity and I like to work hard, so... Uh, yeah. Here's the thing in the book, and this struck me after I finished reading it, it struck me that it's, it's kind of a love story. Absolutely, yeah. It's yeah. you and Simon yeah. falling in love. Yeah. And because, no, but it's true, and it's becoming, like, the closest people can get, really. He turns up on 185. <laughs> uh, but someone, re someone read the book and said that as soon as he comes into my life, 
the whole tone of the book changes. Yeah, yeah. And I didn't realise that until I reread it. It's like, well, absolutely, yeah, it does. You it's bonded sort of over Star Wars, though, didn't you? Yeah, 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 we did. Comedy, yeah, and Star Wars in particular. It was about two weeks in to our young, fresh relationship, and we were having a curry, and he made a noise of a droid in Star Wars, and... And I'd never heard anyone make that noise before. What droid was it? It was the little mouse droid that Chewbacca shouts at. <laughs> beep, beep, beep. <laughs> and then Chewie shouts it in. It, <laughs> you know, it runs off. But it was that, yeah. He had, like, a, a, a salt cellar and he did it across the table. I was like, whoa. <laughs> you see, I had a big nerdgasm all over him. It, <laughs> if we saw that happening on first dates, we go, they're going far, those two. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah. that's working. Um, yeah. But it's interesting because uh, alarming when they find someone, a friend like that, especially when they weren't a school friend yeah. or a young friend, it's hard for them to become that close to someone else. It's hard for them to, to let someone else in yeah, like that. But you, but you both were quite OK about Yeah, that. we were cool. It never, ever felt like, you know, we'd want to make each other's bananas cry. <laughs> and we just <laughs> got on with... Got on with... Mm -hmm. Just, just take a moment to enjoy that <laughs> phrase, because I'm pretty sure you won't have heard that before, <laughs> and I'm pretty sure you will wind up using that yourself uh -oh. one day. What was Dave and the bananas thing? Yeah, it's a good choice. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, we just liked each other. You yeah, know. yeah. Okay, and so uh, you hadn't acted before. No, uh, you hadn't done any comedy before. Uh, I did gigs. I did like twelve stand-up okay. gigs. So you must have been terrified those first few gigs. How were they for you? They were awful. Um, the first gig I ever did, uh, it was a competition, and in the toilets afterwards, the guy said, "Hey, you know you've won," and I came out and I was like, "I fucking, I fucking won! I fucking won the competition!" And I started to get all cocky, and I was sat there, and you know they they were doing the results, and they said, "And the winner is," and I kind of did this, no. <laughs> and it was someone else. They'd given it to someone else. <laughs> In the interim. <laughs> so at that stage, he wasn't winding you up, but he thought you had one. Yeah. Oh my yeah. God. Wow. And there was some kind of impropriety or. Yeah. Hold that, it. You're, you're acting like this was a fix in some way. You yeah, still, I'm, I'm, furious. You, I'm furious. You haven't moved on from this. <laughs> I haven't moved on. I mean, that's in the book. It's, it's, <laughs> it's half of the second half of the book. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me ask you about your little boy a little bit. Just in that, yeah. does he know what you do? Does he understand yet? Because he's four, you said? Yeah, he is. <clears throat> yeah, he's four, four and a bit. And yeah, I think he doesn't. I mean, he just knows that I'm on telly a bit. And sometimes if he sees other big bearded men, he says, Dad. So like, no, it isn't me, it's not me. It's like, what's his name from The Office? Or James Corden. It's like, no, it's not me. Uh, but, uh, yeah, you know, I think he, he kind of likes it. He came... I just did a second Huntsman film, and he, he came on set, and as, when we're kind of dressed up in our dwarf garb, we actually have little people. There we go. Yeah. We actually have little people who are our exact doubles, yeah. but scale-wise are half our size. And so he was quite confused seeing a tiny me <laughs> walking, ar walking around. He so a version of Dad that's the same height that he is? Yeah. That yeah, must he have could... freaked him out a bit. Yeah. I, yeah, he really started beating him up. <laughs> <laughs> Taking his crayons away. <laughs> Nick, it's great having you on the show. Uh, the book uh, is really... Uh, it's an eye-opener. He's a man that I've always admired and liked very much. But to read this, it really shows you where he's come from and it, it lets you know why he is the sweet person he is. <laughs> Mr Nick Frost, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Thank you. Cheers. Really Join me after the break. Please, there will be more from Martin and Nick. And I'll be coming to Darcy Bustle, Tiny Tampa, and we have an amazing performance from John Newman, so don't go away. <laughs> See Martin and Nick are still here, but let's get my next guest out. She is one of the greatest ballet dancers the world has ever seen, and she's now one of our favourite judges on Strictly Come Dancing. It is the fabulous Darcy Bustle. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on. You've met Nick and Martin, I believe. Darcy Butler, that is one hell of a katsu right there. Congratulations on that. Thank you. You know, we're lucky, because I believe you were going to wear that tonight, weren't you, Nick? I was, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, congratulations on Strictly Come Dancing. It's bigger and better than ever before. And the ladies and gentlemen, it's... Uh, it could not be a bigger hit show. It's the biggest thing on Saturday night, it really is. Uh, what, do you, what do you think it is, though? What's the secret? What, what is it about dancing, that show that we love? Because years ago, if you'd have said, we're going to put ballroom dancing back on TV, people would have thought you were being ridiculous. It, it is odd, and it's amazing how it's gravitated and, you know, nobody can get enough of it now. Um, 
I think it's often the Latin, uh, and watching people being taught a new craft, but also them loving every minute of it. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, it is the costumes, it's the band, you know, it's, it's quite traditional. You both love dancing as well, don't you? Because you, you danced on screen several times. Yeah. And Cuban Fury, you learned all the salsa and the Latin. Really? Uh, yeah, I trained as a dancer for seven, seven months, wow. every day, six or seven hours a day. Wow. And did you get pretty good? Do you keep it up now? I don't keep it up. I mean, I think I have that fire in... It's always in my heart, um, to a certain <laughs> extent. So, I mean, I'm more... As a, as a, you know, I have a, as a seller, as a, I have a child, and we're always dancing around and stuff. Yeah, but, yeah, of course yeah. you're, yeah. Martin, are you a dancer? I'm a beautiful dancer, yes. <laughs> <laughs> what style are you? All of them. I can do the lot. <laughs> <laughs> He's just naturally gifted. Yeah, it's just I'm thing, sure you are as well. Oh, I've got the hips, I tell you what. Yeah. So you'll be next on Strictly, yeah. yeah? No, because, you know what, what's the point? If you know you're going to win, why would you go into something? <laughs> um, no, no, I, I, you know what, I don't think I would do it. I know where the guys have been asked, but because I know just how hard everyone in it has to mm, work. They do. I mean, it's a real commitment for everyone who takes part in that, and you have to admire them. Because going in there, they know that, and they really give it all their time and all their energy, And it's don't a they? big shock. It's a real shock, because a lot of them have never, ever been that physical. So they don't understand that every muscle in their body is going to ache. Now, some people take it to it very naturally, as I said. Other people, they find it... You, you can see they're a little bit out of their comfort zone. Yes. OK, I'm going to ask you about one of the current... My favourite at the moment, probably, in the competition, Jeremy Vine. Oh, he's gorgeous. <laughs> Jeremy for the win. OK, now... Um, he's, your, he's your number one, is He's he? my number one choice. Okay. OK. I love a bit of Andre. Of course I do, don't we all? OK, I can see that bloke out of that band. He's going to do OK as well. But yeah, for me, Jeremy Vine, I know you're a fan of his as well. I am a fan. I, it, he's kind of got an odd charm about him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but he does look like a giant spider. And you want him <laughs> to kind of be able to bring it all together and contain it. Yeah, and it's you. all about out here. Okay. But so, he's slowly getting it together. Your advice to be, if he's watching now, which he may well be, your advice to him going forward, what would that be? And I'm sure you've spoken to him off camera as well, but what do you say to encourage someone who isn't the most natural of dancers? I think it's, it's weird with him because he gets very overexcited. Yeah. And, and, and with those limbs and with the excitement, it goes wild. Mm. So he doesn't appreciate that one step for him looks like a, a leap. It looks know. like a giant one for mankind. It looks like a yeah. giant leap. <laughs> and so it's all about actually him trying to mark the steps. Okay. Uh, he'd look a hundred times better. Just hold it in a bit. Half the amount of energy and less. smaller steps. Less is more, Jeremy. Oh. OK, let's have a look at Jeremy in action. Have you been watching the show? Have you seen Jeremy <laughs> dancing? <laughs> Some of you know what I'm talking about. Now you're going to enjoy the experience, which is... So I call this Vine Again. Check this out. <laughs> I think that's what a nervous breakdown looks like set to music. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, do you think you'll make the final, or do you think that that's wishful thinking on my part? Um, I don't... You know, it's, it's so up to the audience, you know, and they do fall in love with characters, just like Jeremy, as we do. Wow, that's a diplomatic answer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. No, no, but, but you know what? <laughs> Let, he'll get close, I'm sure. He's fabulous. He's going to surprise us now, you know that. Who do you think might be through to the final? I've got the list here, um, and some of them you know are just doing great. I mean, Jay McGuinness is doing great, mm. of course. Yeah. And Peter Andre's doing great. Also, yeah. Kirsty Gallagher's doing tremendously well. <laughs> you, you like her as well? Just seeing okay, your reaction okay, there. Okay. <laughs> Who do you think will see through? Georgia May? Um, Georgia May, Helen. Yeah. Helen George. Um, Probably, yeah, Jay, um, you know, Anita from Country File. Yeah. Amazing. So all the girls you're showcasing there. Ainsley, how are you? Ainsley Harriet, I love him to bits. You know, he's such a showman. Yeah. And that, you I need... a butt coming. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you need a lot of that. But, you know, it's really weird because people progress differently. Yeah. And they do surprise you. Yeah. And, and that's what the charm of the show is. You know, is. people don't know. Well, continue success with it. I love watching it. Let's talk about you a bit. Let's talk about... Because it's... it's Fabulous that you're doing this now, called because a ballet dancer is rather like, uh, I suppose, a professional athlete, a sportsman, any other yes. field. You, you know, your career can only last for so long yep. at that level, and then you do need to do something else. Uh, when you go to dance, you must have known that. 
Yes, I, it was always a short career, and I think, you know, my parents didn't want me to go into dancing. Um, I don't think uh, they thought I had the discipline for it either. But it, it was weird, because it is a short career, and it has become shorter, and you do have to think about what you're going to do afterwards. But I have to say, I didn't mm. um, at all. Um, I didn't even think when, when my retirement time was going to be. Um, I was very lucky. I had two kids while I still danced. I mean... My youngest was three, my oldest was six when I so retired. when you're pregnant, how, how long can you dance with the baby uh, before you have to, before it starts showing in your tutu? Yeah, it, it's... <laughs> what? In your tutu? The in bump, your tutu. the bump. Oh, tutu. When you tutu. can't do your costumes up, What you did mean? I say? Did I say tutu? I thought you said tutu. I didn't say <laughs> before it starts showing on your tutu, because that would be just... That would just be filthy. <laughs> right. I mean, you know... Yeah, yeah, I get it, I get it. No. Um, no. <laughs> I, I kind of danced until four months. I know I have known dancers who have gone into five months. Wow. But, but it, on it, a slender dancer's fighting. But it's fighting, so dependent must... on what you're doing. Yeah. I mean, if you're doing big lifts, and I was doing Nutcracker at the time, and that's, that's when I stopped. That's what you into that trouble in the first place. <laughs> 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 um, I, I, I can say this without fear of contradiction. You're the most famous ballet dancer in the country. OK, you really are. You were the youngest principal dancer for the World Ballet. How old were you when you, when you were I was uh, at 20 years of principal. 20 years old. Yeah. They're beautiful to see you in action there. Um, what kind of reaction do you get now as opposed to then? Because then, I guess, it was a, a fairly small group who knew who you were. Now it's more yeah, or less everyone. Yeah, and you look very different when you're on stage, of yeah, course. So course. in the theatre, you know, you're, never, you're never playing yourself. Um, you're always playing somebody else. So it is, it is very strange now doing live television and um, being with people like you and being known for different things. It's, it's more odd that people don't know me as a dancer. And, and that's odd. And so people suddenly come up to me and go, I hear you were a classical ballerina. You know, right. like really surprised. And I go, yeah, you know, it's a long time being a classical ballerina. But I don't know, people now recognise me about my voice, and that's really odd. So I'll be on the tube and uh, I'll be talking to a friend or something, and people turn around because they recognise my voice, and that is the oddest thing. That must be so strange. Could really you do odd. the cashier number five, please? <laughs> 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 that, that is you, isn't it? Exactly. Um, do you dance when you're out? Do you feel... Because I would imagine, if I was out someone I knew Darcy was going to hit the dance floor, you imagine you'd nudge people and say, this is going to be good. So there's a kind of a pressure on you to do a bit more than a regular person. Um, I hope not. I, I, nobody, luckily, recognises me that much um, until I put my leg up or something like that. <laughs> and then I'm worth well, looking at. Well, that would do it. Now <laughs> <laughs> I recognise you. Oh, it's you! <laughs> So Darcy's got a CD out, ladies and gentlemen, and it's got some of the most beautiful music on it and some of the most annoying music. Thank That's you. a subjective response. Because, <laughs> you know, it's filled with beautiful classical music, but some of it I adore, and some of it I think I've heard too often. You know what I mean? Do you know that feeling? You know, the classics, the, if they weren't in there, it would be very strange. You've got to do them. Yeah. It, it, you know, it's sort of like a, um, going back in time for me and all the things that were quite significant in my career. Do you ever in your mind, go back to when you're on stage doing Swan Lake or doing something like that and the moves come out again? I, it, it happens to me all the time. It, it, probably when I'm in a supermarket, I hear Sleeping Beauty and it actually... I feel sick. Mm. <laughs> Only because it's one of the hardest roles. So your mind goes back to being backstage? I feel all that um, energy and what I've got to produce, what I've got to do, and, and, and knowing that I'm going to be totally exhausted and not be able to feel my feet or hands. It's such a weird feeling. I mean, it's, it's a kind of a an edgy feeling, but excitement at the same time, but dread at another yeah. time. You should go to my local supermarket, they just play Bangwa. <laughs> okay. You'd be fine. <laughs> the album, ladies and gentlemen, the Darcy Bustle Ballet Collection is out Friday, <laughs> just before Halloween. I think you'll agree she's a charming guest. Darcy Bustle! Thank you, Darcy. <laughs> Darcy Bustle. Still to come after the break, more from Martin Darcy and Nick, and I'll be chatting to Tiny Temper, and we have music from John Newman. Don't miss it. <laughs> Welcome back. Welcome back to the Jonathan Ross Show. Let's get my final guest out. He is a multi-platinum selling, multi-Brit award winning, multi-talented musician and a fashion icon. It is Tiny Temper. Yeah. Look at that. Look at that. He wears his 
so well. Thank you. Oh, and a smell of honey. Smells so good. Oh, thank you. Oh, it smells so good. Thank you. Come here, you. Yeah. Oh, tiny, have I been down? Well, now listen. I'm going to ask the other guests. This tiny, have you ever smelt a man who smells as good as Tiny smells right now? Oh, that's too no. bad. Darcy. Oh, he does smell fabulous. Thank you, Darcy. Yeah, I love it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the secret to your smell? No. <laughs> I was, just, I was just enjoying the banter from earlier on. Good, good, good. Oh, the high kicking, yes, the high kicking. Exactly, kick exactly. Tiny, what's your real name? Because your real name isn't Tiny or Temple, is it? Of no, course? my real name is Patrick. Patrick. Yes. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which is Some a... people find that funny. Yeah. Well, it, because Patrick for a rapper, he doesn't yeah, even say, yeah. you know. What even makes it less of a rapper name is my mum actually named me. Well, my dad's called Patrick, so she named me mainly because of that reason, but also after St. Patrick. So, Tiny and Temper. <laughs> yes. You, you went with uh, Temper first, didn't you? Yeah, so... I went with Temper first because I wanted a hard name. Okay. But I was like 14 at the time. So, 14 year old boy wants 14 to be a 14 year old bit, boy. Uh, yeah. I want to be a rapper. I need a tough name. Um, and then I, I thought Temper, and I thought, I'm definitely not a Temper. So, you were a good boy as well? Yeah. So, you wanted to sound like a street kind of guy, but sometimes you thought Temper is a bit too aggressive. Yeah, Temper's a bit too much. Too yeah. much. It just sounds yeah, really yeah. aggressive. Yeah. So, I literally looked in the thesaurus um, and. <laughs> and um, somehow. You're not, you're not the most street rapper out there, are no, you? Right? No, no, no. I was like, no, definitely so not Patrick the most street. So Patrick took his thesaurus down, ladies and gentlemen. What's going to soften the aggression of temper? Yeah, exactly. And I ended up finding Tiny and I just changed the spelling slightly. Well, Tiny Temper sounds so good. Yeah, it works. It works. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's you know, uh, nowadays you wouldn't have to go to that trouble. There is a web page out where you can put in your name and it gives you a rap name back. Are and you I'm aware sure you've done that before. Well, we have done this right now. I would be, if you put my name in, mm -hmm. I would be, this is what he gave me, Swagger Jonathan. <laughs> Swagger, boom. OK. <laughs> Darcy, they really got the town in you. You would be Shady Darcy Be Quick. I like That's pretty good, isn't it? I, like I love it. it. Original G. Uh, yeah. Martin, like Martin is M Smooth Bomb. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Totally yeah, yeah. yes, that is And happening. Nick, get this, Nick is NF Hood. Wow. <laughs> That one sounds a bit dodgy. OK, that, yeah. Well, that. you think that sounds dodgy? When we put Tiny Temper in, it's renamed you Meaty Tickle. <laughs> I, yeah, I, yeah, I'm just going to avoid that website. No, I think yeah. uh, you say that. When you go home, you're going to be going, yeah, Meaty Tickle. Stay away. That's right. <laughs> OK, uh, when you started, how long did it take you? Because you, for me, what I'm saying is you sort of appeared on the scene, you were fully formed, boom, with a hit. Wow. Right? How long had you been working away? How long did it take you to, to get where you wanted to be? Um, well, I started taking it really seriously towards um, the end of secondary school. And so, um, basically, I got a job and I saved up some money and I shot a music video. I released it at 16 and I'd been trying from 16 up until probably when you first heard me. Uh, your mum wasn't always convinced you were going to make it, though, was she? No, she wasn't. Um, not, absolutely not. I think as a, as a Nigerian parent, you know, I'm, I'm originally from Nigeria, born here. But they are very much... Um, Academic, like yeah. that's that's where you win. Well, we know they have a thesaurus. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that, that's a great start. But she always wanted me to go through like a very a lot more of a safer route, like being a doctor or accountant. Or so something she wanted like what she saw as a safe profession, yeah. understandably. Yeah, all of my sisters have like degrees in like sociology and law, and I just have plaques. Yeah. I just put up record plaques next to the degree. Uh, yeah. I'm yeah. sure she values you all equally, of course, your mum. But is she now, has she come round to what you do? Does she like what you have done with your Absolutely. life? Absolutely. My mum, my right, she works for the NHS and she says, son, you are probably the only reason why I still have my job. That's what she said, basically, to be fair, <laughs> with all everything that's going on. So, um, recently, Guy's Hospital opened up, like, a brand-new cancer building and they're still trying to raise some money for it, actually. So... About two weekends ago, she made me go down there and, like, meet everybody, and they were doing this run from the bottom... I was actually born in Guy's Hospital, so it was quite cool. How nice. Yeah, and they were doing this run from zero to the 29th floor, and I had to basically pretend I did the run. Hold and... on, hang on. What's this? <laughs> no, hang on. You did it. So you didn't... Hold it, because this was beginning to be a, a lovely story. Yeah. <laughs> And then you admitted that you've essentially cheated a cancer ward. <laughs> Basically, right, I, ra I ran from stairs zero to three, and then we did an edit, and then I did it from, like, 27 to 29. Just, and I came Why out would and you I'm, tell I'm like, this story? 
<laughs> on television. Because, because in all fairness, that's not the main reason why, like, why I was there. The I'm main joking. reason why I was there was to basically give them all medals as they made it up to the 29th well, floor. Well, so you, you had to be there first. Yeah, I had and, to be And you for, wanted to win. Exactly. Yeah. And I'm so, very competitive. <laughs> yeah. But that's a lovely thing, and yeah. it's so sweet that she's so proud of you. Now, you've had, this is the thing, you've had more number ones than any other British rapper. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Six number one records in this country, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Okay, so you've got a new tune. This is KDA with KDA. Turn the music louder. Mm -hmm. Brackets rumble. Close brackets. Featuring Tiny and KTB. This looks pretty certain to be another number one. Am I yeah, right? Yeah, fingers crossed. Okay. Yeah, we're at the moment we're above One Direction, which is crazy. I love One Direction. They're on the show in a couple of weeks' time as well. We got a One Direction. All right, don't tell them I said that then. I will start with that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know they did a thing recently for hospital. They went all the stairs. As well. <laughs> Yeah. And they did it twice. <laughs> now, you are uh, a young man, good-looking man. We've Thank you. We've already pointed out you smell nice. You're a single man. <laughs> yeah. Any chance of settling down to you? Is there someone special on the horizon or in your life? Yeah, I mean, of course. I, I, I feel like by the time I'm 30, I, I want a kind of life like you, Martin. I want a farm. I want some animals. No, seriously, I want some horses, basically. Yeah? Yeah. Can you ride horses? Have you ridden horses? I did one time in Cuba. Wow. But I don't, I don't know, it wasn't, I, I, what's the word, I was trotting, yes. I didn't gallop. No. Or gallop or canter. Cuba, you're canter. probably eloping. You're on the beach? Yeah, I did exactly, I was on the beach, yeah. Ah. And afterwards, it get nice. really... Yeah, it does. <laughs> I was actually scared as I was getting off because, um, uh, what's the thing you put your feet stirrup. in? The stirrup. <laughs> yeah, so the stirrup were... You really did only have one yeah. time. Yeah, on <laughs> literally, literally. <laughs> Uh, would you like us to get Dave out? Would you like a little ride on Dave, Tiny? Uh, he's a bit little, but... Yeah, but you're tiny. Come on, we can put the two of you together. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You know, you know, when he was out here, I was really hoping he just shat everywhere the whole time. <laughs> so, I was there, I was that waiting, I was like, stuff. come on, this is going <laughs> to be great. Um, so what's going on with your... Uh, you're doing a TV thing now. Bring the noise on Sky 1 on Thursdays. You can see uh, Tiny on a regular basis on our screens. Uh, and it's, a, it's, a, it's sort of a quiz show, but it's a performance show as well. What, yeah. what, how would you describe Bring the Noise? Pretty much, we're just celebrating contemporary music. I'm a team captain. Nicole Scherzinger is also a team captain. Great pairing, yeah. And Ricky Wilson is the host, the presenter. He's phenomenal, he's great. Um, Nicole is... Fantastic as well. You know, it's nice to be able to have that American flair yeah, in, yeah. The, in the show. And every single episode, we just get a different musician or TV personality who likes music, and we just rip the shit out of them for, like, an hour. <laughs> is uh, that how you sell it to the guests before they come in? Or I mean, just... <laughs> it's in the small print. It's at the bit at the bottom. Uh, we have a clip, and this is you, I believe. This is from last Thursday's uh, edition, and I believe you, you sing underwater in this yes, one. That yeah. must be quite the challenge. Yeah, of course. That's called Aquapella. Aquapella? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> OK, I like this show. Uh, let's have a look. This yeah, is yeah. Uh, Tiny Underwater uh, from Bring the Noise on Sky One. Uh, this is the song you've got to do. OK. You got it? Yeah. Happy? Yeah. Cool. Go for it, Tiny. <laughs> I drank some of it. Oh. <laughs> oh, so, you guys know what it was? Well, we have to guess now what song you were singing yeah. there. I, 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 haven't got a, I haven't got a clue. First of all, does anyone here know what he was singing there? Yeah. Anyone want to? You've got great teeth, though. No. Oh, anyone can guess what he was singing? <laughs> Correct. Whoops, I did it again. Yeah. Britney. Yeah. That's a terrible version you've done. I, know. <laughs> no, no. I mean, you're good, but don't release that. I know, that's why I'm a rapper, guys. <laughs> uh, it looks like yeah. great fun. So you're doing that, and are yeah. you touring again? You doing anything live again soon? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so we just came back from Ibiza. We were doing, like, a pool party for 13 weeks. So we've just done that. Um, and, yeah, at the moment, I'm kind of just recording the third album. So... And you're excited with that? Is it a, a different sound for you? Or it is a different thing? sound, yeah. I'm, at the I'm 26 now. I'm going to be 27 next month, so... The next album is kind of like a, an ode to all the different genres of music I loved while I was going through my teenage years. Do you like the old school stuff at all? I like uh, instrumentally, yeah. I like a bit of old school garage. I love garage. You know, See, for I love me, house. that isn't old school. For me, that's still a bit too new. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I I say say old say, school. I, I mean, something before like the 80s. 
Well, any Harold Melvin in the Blue Notes on there? No. Nah, Teddy Pendergrass. I can't say. Oh, I love Teddy Pendergrass, but I can't Teddy. say there is. The whole town's laughing at me. Wow. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Martin, I can see you want to join in. No, I wasn't. I was just well, saying, why are they clapping? Wow, that's actually surprisingly harder than it looks. Yeah, it's really hard. All right, so Tiny, great to have you here. You must come back and uh, perform for us sometime. I, know oh, this I would love to. Going. Next single, for sure. We would love to have you do that. But, of course, we've got John Newman here. I know you yes, know his work. I'm a big fan. I love him. Yeah. John will be out here. But, ladies and gentlemen, will you join me for now saying thank you to all my guests? But right now, Mr Tiny Temper. <laughs> Thank you, Tiny. Thanks, John. Really lovely. Okay. So thanks to Tiny and all my guests tonight, of course, Martin, Nick, and Darcy as well. Uh, next week on the show, I'll be joined by the legendary Elvis Costello. We have the incredible Priscilla Presley here, the hilarious young Rob Beckett, and my favourite French electro swing band, Caravan Palace. You know of them? No. <laughs> well, they're great. They'll be performing in their own unique style. But to end this week's show with Tiring Game, here he is. It's a fabulous performance. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. John Newman. <laughs> And next Saturday at 10.25 is the 100th episode of The Jonathan Ross Show. Our brand new retelling of classic tale Jekyll and Hyde starts tomorrow at 6.30, then The X Factor returns tomorrow at 7.30, as the boys and girls will be chosen live in the judges' houses and Downton Abbey throws open its doors to the public. That's tomorrow at 9. Next, the ITV Evening News.